set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? Ah, it's going good. I mean, we're remote, so it's a little bit, you know, not as cool. I can't smell you guys, but, you know, it's okay, I guess. Some weeks, that's not a bad thing. I mean, you're lost. I usually sit next to you, and I know at least I, on my end, I shower right before I get there. So I know I come in smelling silky and smooth. Yeah, I've never, I never sm- smelled anybody bad. And I'd be the first person to say, wow, you smell terrible. That that's, that's fair. It seems like you would do that. So that's I mean, because if anybody would think it would be me, because I just got out of being in a car for three hours. Yeah, so. that's true. I don't think people realize how much you put in this podcast. You literally drive three hours uh, every Tuesday to come to this podcast. So because I love you guys. Yeah, we and love you too. And and I genuinely look forward. To it. It's not even like a uh, after like I'm like oh I'll go get to see Rich and Matt. It's a good time. It's a good day. It's- it's way better in person than it is in this, uh, like what we're doing today. Like today we're remote, so I'm looking at you guys. I got to look at myself, pretty hideous, but that's okay. You know, um, I could do that. I'm more focused on just you guys. So we're here. We're talking AFC West. It's our last divisional breakdown uh, this week. So it's pretty exciting. That means we're itching, inching, not itching. Well, I'm itching for the season to itching start too. Inching. inching. Uh, did you just, what did you just hold up? Uh, Inch. Uh, put that away before your wife gets mad. Um, <laughs> and you know, that means we're real close to the season. So this week, uh, we're talking to AFC West next week. We're going to be, you'll, you'll have an episode of our kind of our redraft show where we talk about our top 12s and our sneaky players for this year. So it's a one time we do like a redraft show. I mentioned uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been completely honored to be invited by Colonel Chris Meeker to come out and do that show for the troops. So this Thursday, uh, at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, we will be there uh, talking dyna- or fantasy football with the troops. Kind of like talking a little dynasty with them as well. Kind of opened that up to them. Hopefully, we record it because our producer can't come because he's grounded because um, he went on a month long vacation. And hopefully, we get to record it out pretty good and everybody can enjoy that. If not, then we'll have to record it again. <laughs> then we'll <laughs> two two figure shows. Figure it out. We'll figure it out. So. We'll just after, recreate it. You know, yeah. it'll sound exactly the same. Oh, yeah, with all those people in the background. Yeah. But so check our socials. I plan on trying to post, like, as many pictures as possible of us. Like, we're going to go on a jet, um, which is pretty sweet. We're going to see the labs. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so exciting. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, so check out our Twitters, man. I'll be posting us going in a jet video. I might live. You know, I might go live in the air, you know, on a big C-17. Who knows? Who knows? You know. Like I said, I mean, it's pretty much Navy SEAL Rich going out over there. Uh, well, that's not Air Force. What are Air Force? Top Gun. Yeah. Top Gun Rich. Can't wait. Dog fights. Here we go. So excited for that. Um, and then it's the season. And we'll kick it off. And we'll be breaking down from Dynasty aspect going forward. So before we get into AFC West, I got to tell you, everybody, about our friends at Underdog and how they've been such a tremendous sponsor uh, with us up to this point as we get to the season. And, you know, when the season starts, it's just telling you at Underdog, you're running out of time to join Best Ball Mania. And that's going to give you a chance for $25 to win $3 million and tons of other prizes and cash prizes. Underdog's the number one best ball fantasy app out there. I mean, if you like to draft fantasy football teams and then shove them to the side like they're unwanted love, then you could do that with that, right? And then if they win, you pull them right back in and you let them know how much you care about them. But if you don't, you just give it a quick glance, see you didn't cash in the money, and just sweep it under the rug, right? Lost love. Lost love. It's okay. We've all been there. You know? I've been stood up on Valentine's Day. Ooh, that's brutal. <laughs> I haven't. I'm just kidding. I, I, I haven't. He's making, he's making it up, people. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was wanting to hear that. Here's the thing that I've learned over time, Rich, is with whatever comes out of your mouth, I never know if you're being sarcastic or serious. Never know. Yeah. It's I, half the time your stories are nuts. So yeah. it's true. There's one time I uh I uh <laughs> I went on a Valentine's Day date uh and the whole time uh I don't I ended up talking yeah it wasn't good just keep it, it wasn't let's just keep it, it all to yourself it didn't end well um but Underdog <laughs> is fantastic no, I was gonna stop because it's not 
Matt, Matt knows this. He would know the story in the long run. But anyways, underdog fantasy football is the best place to play best ball. I mean, you can play with your friends. You can play in two men. Heads up. There's so many different avenues. If you go out there and kind of experiment how you want to build a fantasy football team, it's just set your best lineup for you week in, week out, and you have a chance to win a ton of cash. Definitely if you listen to this podcast, podcast because you're a very savvy fantasy yeah. football player. And we're going to do a redraft show next week, so you're going to be really dominating. And right now, if you use the promo code NERDS, they're going to match your deposit up to $100. And on top of that, we're going to give you a free one-year subscription to the Nerd Herd. You're going to get all our great stuff, all our tools, all our video, all our content is going to be there, an extra podcast, a part of the Nerd Herd, for free. All you got to deposit is $10 to Underdog, be a new user there, and we're going to send you that free promo for a year and get all our tools. If you're already an existing Nerd Herd member, we will send you the most comfortable shirt in the world, guaranteed to increase your high five intake, guaranteed to increase your sex life, guaranteed to make you look and feel better anytime you're in front of a mirror. That's how great that shirt is. I wear them on the daily, not because it's my website, it's just because I want my wife to put her lips against mine. That's what I need. And that shirt gets it done. So I'm very excited about that. And with the GM, when you get access to GM, you get the best tools in the world. So I literally was talking to a great Nerd Herd member uh, a couple hours ago by the name of Connor Ziegler. Uh, he wrote in and he's like, hey, I heard Rich was talking about IQ test on the show. This is like over a month ago. He's like, "I'm that's what I do for a living. I'd be happy to give Rich an IQ test. And he did this morning uh, or this afternoon. It's like an hour one. My IQ is about like 105. So I'm like smarter than 55% of the people out there. I wish I could have done better, but I didn't. I think next time I could do better, about probably 10% better, which makes me like slightly above, more above average. <laughs> if you threw a couple fancy football questions in there, um, I've been running track. But the best thing about talking to him is uh, we were talking Dynasty afterwards, and he brought up the – the league analyzer and the GM. And he's like, yeah, I mean, I love opening this up. Like I'm the number one team. And we're kind of talking about some trades he can make. And he never realized that the league analyzer is not there to show you just how good you are, or how bad you are. It's there to show your whole league. And I was like, Hey, let's find you a wide receiver and like, or running back. And who needs a wide receiver? Give so many wide receivers. He's like, and he's looking at it. He's like, I never realized I could use the tool this way. I'm like, yeah, man, that's why we built it. Is it to like kind of give you a bird's eye view? He's like, this changes everything. And I'm like, absolutely. And I was telling him how to like go between contender mode and dynasty mode to kind of really kind of find his trade targets and how, you know, in dynasty, when you want to make trades where it's real easy for those teams, definitely at the bottom of the league, to kind of get those easy wins early on, right? Like weeks one through four before the buys come in because they don't have a lot of depth. And they kind of tack on maybe a couple wins and kind of inflate their reality where like, hey, I might make the playoffs this year because I'm three and one. When once those buys hit in, like they're they start to fall down pretty quickly. But those are teams you want to target, like for trades in Dynasty early, kind of give them, hey, here's a couple of bets that kind of push you along this path of uh, an, uh, you know, a mirage of success that you are not going to achieve. And my favorite thing, like I told him is too, is like, when I look at those teams that are real good dynasty team or high up in the contender ranks, but real low in the dynasty ranks, then those are the teams that I'm trying to attack. They're 25 first, right? I don't want their 24 yeah. first. I want their 25 first because the odds of that team falling off after next season are pretty high. And in, Dynasty players are more apt to trade away a first that's not this year, but the following year because it's easier to recoup, which is true. But if you have the Dynasty GM and analyzer, that's going to put you in the best position to kind of find those teams from a bird's eye view and to really better your team, not maybe next year, but two years down the road where that pick gets probably 100% uh, more valuable. So check it out. Underdog, promo code NERDS. You'll get all that sweet stuff. And get, get access to the Dynasty GM that Rich just rambled on about for 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah, because such a sweet tool. Well, I, he's like, I didn't even realize. Like, I've been a nerd member for a year. I even never, I didn't even know like how to use it. The analyzer. He's like, you guys should probably talk about that again. I was like, oh, I'll bring that up on this podcast. So maybe this offseason we'll do a whole uh, GM breakdown again. We do, probably we, like we, new users. No, we definitely need to. I, I, I was just joking about you rambling on. Obviously, I mean that's that's the tool, and it's great to get out all the functions and and let everyone know exactly what it does. Because sometimes you can just open an app, and you're looking at the surface value of everything and not realizing there's a bunch of stuff in there you can click on, you can change values, you can do all that kind of stuff. So it it, it was a great little um, spiel that you went on there. I, I was just kind of busting chops, but yeah, 
rambling. But that's- well, you hurt my feelings, but I'm gonna move on anyways. I'll power through. Oh, and note, note the number one thing about the GM too, in case people don't know. Remember, you can go in there and set your own rankings, and the whole app will be powered off of that. So, like, if you say, "Hey, this trade calculator isn't as good as I think it should be," or these rankings are slightly off, like they have Derrick Henry too low, um, and they have Dalton Kincaid way too high, like Rich, like Rich has a way too high. Then you go in there and set your own rankings and kind of offset them from there and kind of toggle back and th- forth. And you can actually set multiple different rankings and have the a- app like generate any way you want, like the value old players, the value young players. Like there's so many different ways to do it and play around with it. I encourage everybody to download it. Remember, the app is absolutely free to download. Um, you can only just use it in a limited basis until you give us all your hard earned cash. And to your point, Rich, um, when you make those individual rankings, that's what'll power the tool. It'll show you the entire everything else in the, in the league based off of your own rankings. So it, it really gives you a bird's eye view of the the way the league looks through your eyes, basically. So I mean it, it's pretty cool. All that, yeah. All that so every aspect of that runs off that. Yeah, yep. it's it's fantastic. Definitely the league analyzer. It's my favorite thing about the whole tool. And so if it's one thing I ever had to push, that league analyzer has been my baby since I think Matt, you and I sat down at your kitchen table probably like six years ago. I'm like, dude, we need to build a sweet tool. Yeah. Where's the start? Like we're like a bird's eye view of our league. That's what we need to see because it's it's the hardest thing in dynasty financial balls to see a bird's eye view of your league. It just it is because otherwise you're just going through uh, teams and we're the best app in dynasty financial ball for that. And I'll stand by that. And if that's not true, I'll push one of my kids down next time I see him. So sure I am. Uh, you're, done done. you're one kid's getting pretty big, so I know which one you're going to push down. <laughs> yeah, definitely a smaller one. A big one might be able to take me soon. I understand. That's scary. So now we're finally ready. I'm sure we'll see a comment. Well, t- we didn't wait 12 minutes to start talking fantasy football. Um, <laughs> that's just what we do. Sorry. Uh, AFC West, where we started, Matt? Um, I mean, I guess at the Denver Broncos. That's where I would normally start, right? Are you going to give me the depth chart, or do you want me to start rambling? <laughs> I could give you the Jeff chart as long as I have it pulled up, which I don't right now. So give me one second and I will. I got it right in front of me. Oh, good. Go ahead, Look Rich. At you. No, I got it. Russell All Wilson right. at quarterback, Jared Stenham. Um, ben DiNucci uh, at running back, favorite Williams. Uh, Samaj yeah. P. Ryan, <laughs> Tyler Beatty, and Tony Jones. Uh, Tony jones jr which apparently is a tongue twister for me uh right now this one shows greg dulcich adam troutman uh greg uh chris manhurts and and albert o is somewhere in there as well uh at wide receiver Cortland sutton marvin mims jerry judy uh marquez calloway brandon johnson kendall hilton there's a bunch of guys i mean obviously uh tim patrick going down was a big hit and that's about it as far as the uh fantasy relevant guys all right, so let's jump right in here. Um, I think we should start at the top. We might as well start here with Russell Wilson, the quarterback. Somebody who I've never been a big fan of. It's mostly a personality base um, that I haven't been a big fan. But lately, it's really been his statistics as well. It, we, we've mentioned this on a podcast many times where he was complaining how he wanted to be like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in Seattle. And Pete Carroll's like, bro, bro, come on, Mr. What's it? What's it? What's he? Mr. What? What's he call himself? Uh, it was, uh, unlimited, Mr. Unlimited. Yeah. Mr. Unlimited. You're very limited, uh, in what you can do. So we'll just go ahead and trade you away and and prove our point. And last year was his worst year, uh, statistically for ever. So they bring in Sean Payton, hoping they get fix Russ. And I mean, Russ looked a little better at the end of the back half of the second year, but he also had a couple games where he had some solid Russian numbers, which kind of propelled him up a little bit more, which isn't really his game. And I think he's about 36 year old, 30, 36 years old. Do you think this team and this coaching staff can get Russell Wilson back to those QB one numbers or is Russell Wilson from this point going forward, just a mid range QB two with uh skis on and on a snowy hill. Um, skis on on a snowy hill. Um, so this, down. This, this going one, down yeah. fast, Matt. No, going I got down it. fast. I, I got it. I guess that'd be a sled. You can stop in skis. It's Russell Wilson on a sled on a <laughs> no snowy way. hill. I mean, possibly. Obviously, he's an he's an older guy. He's thirty. You said thirty six, right? Um, I think he's, uh, I think he's, I was gonna say I think he's I, 30, I think he's thirty four uh, and turning thirty five. 
Um, Deshaun Watson, I mean, Deshaun Watson, Jesus, I'm looking at the wrong name. Uh, Russell Wilson last year, <laughs> obviously started off terrible and, and towards the end of the year kind of started to get a little bit better as that whole offense kind of came together. Uh, but if you look, I mean, I know it's a small sample size. Week 14 to work, week 18, he was a, a, a top 12 guy. He, he, he finished as uh, number 11 here in, in fantasy pros rankings as far as fantasy points. So I think it's possible that he still has some juice left. I just don't know if that's going to equate to anything, you know, close to that end of the year stuff. Or is this, hey, Russ is starting over in a new system again. So we're going to expect another slow start from Russell Wilson and kind of towards the end of the year, maybe we'll see some numbers, which at, at that point, he's going to end up finishing 18, 19, 20, right around where he finished last year. Um, so he's a he's a little bit of an enigma for me i do think he's probably more comfortable with the his surroundings at least his, his wide receivers that he's throwing the ball to and whatnot so uh, to i guess long story short i think russell wilson is an interesting guy especially at the price because i think the price tag has come down quite a bit um from from years past so he's a guy that you know you're never going to want to rely on as your qb1 but he might be able to sneak in qb1 numbers so that, that's kind of how i see russell wilson at this point he's he's a guy that's probably going to in super flex bounce around quite a bit the next few years just because he's of that age and and he's kind of middling between uh qb1 and qb2 numbers um so he's not unobtainable like he was five years ago uh which i think probably makes him a bit of a, a bargain for what you're going to get on some weeks anyway yeah, I'm I'm a big Russell Wilson guy uh, in the sense of everyone just jumped, abandoned ship. And I get it. It was not a good year. Mm -hmm. But you have those seasons with players sometimes. We think about the year before with Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence looked terrible, like historically bad. And it was just a bad coach, a bad culture, a bad situation. It just wasn't good. I think that was similar to what happened in Denver last year. I think they're going to get it turned around. Sean Payton's a very good, experienced coach worked with a guy that had similar attributes to a Russell Wilson and Drew Brees for his entire career and made him an elite top five all-time quarterback. Now, that being said, the biggest reason I'm in, though, is there's still a lot of security in Russell Wilson. His contract is constructed in a way that worst-case scenario, you're getting three years. You're getting three years of Russell Wilson. That's right. Uh, and even after that, it's still like a $31 million dead cap hit for them to get rid of him. So it's really more like four years that that you have a Russell Wilson as the starting quarterback of the Denver Broncos. And right now you're looking at him when you're drafting him, you're drafting him as quarterback 17, 18, 19 off the board in a dynasty league. And I think he could easily match and exceed those numbers. Is the day like are the days of him being a top five quarterback probably gone? Yeah, probably so. But if he can live in that nine to 15 range, I'll be thrilled. Yeah. For me, for Russ, man, you said you hit like it's people abandoned ship. I feel like the, that ship hit iceberg um, and it's, it's slowly leaking water. Oh, exactly. And, and I understand the curiosity. I mean, I get it, man. You go to like an all you can eat buffet that has a variety of different foods. And then you wake up in the morning you have a jumbo coffee and you're having to see in the, the porcelain, you know, like, you, you might look back because you're curious, you know, what's going on around there, but like, it still looks like, you know, it doesn't look good, you know? So that's, a, that's my feeling about Russell Wilson. Not very excited about it. Curious you may be, but I think in the long run, when you look back on the year, you're going to be um, somewhat disappointed. <laughs> Never look back. Rich. We've had a lot of uh, analogies over the years, Rich. That one was a tough one to follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole point is don't look back. Just keep okay, moving forward. Right. Just you shouldn't look back. Move forward. And I, I mean, Russ, for me, like I love like that security of those years. Like with the influx of like some of these younger quarterbacks, right? Like we we know Russ hasn't been a, a quarterback one since going back to twenty twenty, essentially, uh, where he's like top, like quarterback six overall. And, and I know Matt mentioned from week thirteen on, but if you look at some of the quarterbacks behind him after those weeks, like it was pretty. Um, some guys that you feel pretty good about to get in there. He's got a fight with other guys that want to jump into quarterback one side this year that haven't been playing for a while, a guy like Deshaun Watson. If Tua could stay healthy, he's going to jump in that mold. I think we're all pretty comfortable with Justin Fields not coming out of there. You know, the top guys, Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence. Like Those guys are not coming out. Justin Herbert's in that category. So for Russ um, to come in here, I mean, 
Will he compete with a guy like, you know, Dak Prescott, Tua Tagovailoa, Lamar Jackson's back, Aaron Rodgers in a better offense this year, um, Jared Goff, you know, more weapons around him, Daniel Jones, I expect to still kind of compete for that quarterback one status. Kirk Cousins has kind of shown us year in, year out. So, like, to me, when I look at Russ as a fantasy football hole, nothing to do with, you know, the porcelain, nothing to do um, with him or his personality. I just look at a player here that – I think for the back half of his career is just going to be like that quarterback too. And it's not even just Russ. Like I don't love the weapons around him. Like I like Greg Dulcich. Like, of course I like Jerry Judy and Jerry Judy shows last year. Um, he could be a very good fantasy football wide receiver, but Cortland sutton has been just average since he hurt his knee. Um, hasn't come out and really done much. We'll see about, you know, we know Payton, we know Sean Payton likes to run the ball a ton and he's got a really good running combination here with Samaj P Ryan and Javante Williams. So like, I just don't know if there's enough uh, meat on that bone to even make Russ uh, a quarterback one this late in his career. So where he'll give you quarterback two numbers, which are totally great and, and super flex. Like I would just rather like move on and get younger anywhere. Even so if I'm going to have an average quarterback, like I'd rather just settle for an average quarterback. That's younger. Like, can I, can I get Kenny Pickett straight up? Um, maybe after that preseason game, he looked so good. I, I can't, but can I get throw a little bit on top to get Kenny Pickett and, and like, gain a decade? You know, the whole Jared Goff and all those whole, lines. The whole point of that is you're gonna have to pay a premium, though. I mean, you're you're never gonna get you're never gonna get Kenny Pickett for less than a first or two firsts, probably in, in Superflex. I, I think so because I would rather have Russ than than Pickett. So there you go, Matt. Boom, roasted. Thanks, Garrett. Yeah. No, I'm I, saying, I I'm saying, right now, I'm I saying mean, the point pick- is, uh, uh, go get Russ because he's much cheaper than than getting a pick. The whole that's what I'm trying gotcha. to say is I, I'm 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 for getting a guy like that because he's cheap and he's probably going to get you similar numbers to a lot of guys in that that low end uh, QB one, high end QB two range. So I mean, pay a premium. And, oh, and he's locked in for three years. So, I mean, you're going to get that for a few years. And that's the thing for me. And my quarterback, too, I just want somebody safe. I don't need – like, if I get upside, I'm thrilled. But Kenny Pickett could lose his job after this year. We've seen a lot of guys that after, like, one or two years, if he's not performing great, that they just move on to the next guy. And so I would rather just have the safety and security of Russell Wilson personally. I'd rather have Kenny Pickett by light years. Light, light years, years over us. You had Russell Wilson would make it. That's just me. I'm a hater, though. Self proclaimed. Yeah. Tell him. Let him know. I'll tell. I'll tell him not to his face, but like by <laughs> he a said, DM. I mean, I'll tell him not. To his face. <laughs> well, his teammates can't tell. His teammates can't say it to his face either. So that's true. That. That's true. They're way taller than he is. Let's, let's get to favorite Williams. That's the exciting part of this. Yeah. Let's let's give Garrett the floor here. Talk about Javante Williams. I know before. Um, you know, this offseason, I was like, dude, you guys got to taper back on Javante. You might even start the year. It's going to be Samaj P. Renan. I don't think it'll be a running back one. He looks so damn good in, in that preseason game. Uh, it looks like he's going to be an outlier from ACL. Uh, and in more than that, it was LCL and PLC um, on top of that. So he tore his ACL, he tore his LCL, and his PLC. So, like, he tore, like, he had the trifecta when it comes to torn uh, ligaments. But he looked absolutely fantastic in the receiving game in the running game garrett take the floor and tell us why javante williams is going to be a stud this year and why in dynasty you love him so much yeah he's always been a guy like tape wise i remember just waxing poetic his his rookie year and just just loving how he plays the game obviously brutal brutal knee injury uh but to see him come back the way that he has I mean, it's a very short list of guys that have come back, A, as quickly as he has, but B, have looked like I'm not seeing him run with any sort of limp. I'm not seeing like he looks like he did before. You know, yeah, maybe there'll be a little rust that needs to be knocked off here and there, and that's going to take some time. But the other thing that I was really encouraged by is last year with Russell Wilson, he was averaging seven targets a game in the three games that you know, before his injury, he was averaging seven targets a game. Then this first game in the preseason, five Ooh. targets in the very first game. So Russ is clearly like looking for him. Nothing's changed with Sean Payton as far as that goes. So if he gets the receiving work, he doesn't even have to be amazing between the tackles, which is honestly what he's best at, but he doesn't even have to be amazing between the tackles. He can just be good. And if he's going to catch 60 passes this year, 
then I mean that's that's light years ahead of what we thought we were going to be getting. Even somebody that was a, a big fan like I am, you know, if 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 he's going to be able to do a full workload, uh, you know, running the football, but then also get the wide receiver or the 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 receptions as well. Man, things are if, things are. Looking if he's going to get that kind of work and and those kind of reception numbers, you can just sign me up for a dynasty championship, Rich. What do you think about that? Boop, boop, boop. In, in, in a, in yeah, a, I mean, you might as well because those are really good numbers. League, I'm just gonna I'm gonna run the table. No one's gonna be able to beat me. It's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I I, I I'm I'm gonna retract everything I say I said earlier about like um I didn't think he'd come in. I really did because I mean history tells us that's what that that's what happens after just a regular ACL and for how much ligament damage he had. I thought he was going to be worked back into the system. They gave Samaj P. Ryan $7.5 million, a guy who was averaging 5.2 yards per touch last year, no one paying system. I thought it was going to be a, a workaround. But, I, again, from that preseason game, no limitations whatsoever and go into it. Like, he's going to be the guy. I mentioned earlier, like, I think I think Sean Payne's role here to get the Broncos on back on track is going to be keeping things short and intermediate, and using that run game and like even in would it be using a run game in the pass game, like you said, Garrett. So I think Javante Williams is on pace to be the number one fantasy option in this offense. And that's with Jerry Judy. And that's what I'm looking at this. Like I'm looking at this team is like, where are my fantasy options? Obviously, Javante Williams is the best. Jerry Judy is a very fine um you know, wide receiver when it comes to dynasty, you're talking about somebody who who had a real slow start to the year, but Jerry Judy over the final six weeks of the year last year was wide receiver six in total points and points per game. So that like, where are the options where the ball is going? Because I think it's going to be Javante Williams, Jerry Judy. And if I had to guess Greg Dulcich, like I think that's where the juice is on this offense. Uh, Cortland Sutton doesn't excite me. Martin's Mims. He's he excites me, but he excites me for 2024 and beyond because he's so explosive with the ball in his hands. Like he's so good yards after the catch. And they sent, they spent a second round pick on him. So he's a great buy if he doesn't see a ton of targets earlier in the year. But where are you guys at now with this receiving game out there? You know, Greg Dulcich, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, and even some Adam Troutman uh, getting run out there that they brought over um, and saying like he might be the, like some people are like, well, Adam Troutman's a right tight end one. He's a tight end one. It's like, I don't care where they list Adam Troutman. The number one fantasy option in this offense is Greg Dulcich. As far as the tight ends, um, I think he has the most, you know, the the best fantasy skill set, Greg Dulcich. But getting back to the wide receivers, um, to piggyback on your to piggyback on your point about Jerry Judy and kind of extrapolate just the playoffs, so week fourteen through eighteen, he was actually wide receiver three, and it was. Justin Jefferson at 21 points per game, Keenan Allen at 20.2 and him at 20.1. So, I mean, he was elite game. Like, I mean, that those are winning you games in the playoffs type of, of numbers right there from Jerry Judy. So hopefully that's a, a sign of things to come for this year. Obviously it's a very small sample size um, and, and it's a new offense and all that kind of stuff. But he, we know that Jerry Judy has got the skills he always has. Um, and now it's kind of finally starting to come together here. I think I think this is year four for him, right? This is year four. Yeah. Yeah. Because so they picked up the fifth year option. Yeah, so year, year four for him. And, you know, the sky's the limit if, if they kind of keep that connection going. I'm with you, Rich. Cortland Sutton is one of these guys that I've always wanted more from. And for years, I was a guy waiting for it. And I'm no, I'm no longer waiting. Uh, I just don't think Cortland Sutton is anything special. He, he never kind of turned that corner and became like the beast that I thought he was going to be. So I think this is Jerry Judy's kind of gig here in Denver. And, um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be favorite Williams in the running game. It's going to be Jerry Judy uh, out wide and then whatever tight end they end up going with. I mean, obviously, um, you know, Sean Payton's very familiar with Adam Troutman. He's, he was there in new Orleans and drafted him. Um, and that's, and, and then he brought him over, uh, to Denver and there was some scuttlebutt about, you know, Greg Dolchich not really being the guy, uh, early on. So, there could be some truth to that rumor. I know that, you know, Greg Dolcich probably has a better fantasy profile and something we would all want to see used in the passing game, but it might just end up being a, this in Sean Payton's eyes, this is what he needs from his tight ends. And this is what he wants to see. So it might end up being Troutman getting the majority of the work. So I'm uh, for, for me, I'm kind of, I'm kind of staying away from both of those guys <laughs> for a little bit here. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to plant my flag on either one of them because I don't, I don't know exactly because I, I like Greg Dulcich's skill sets, but Troutman I think has probably got the the favor of the coach. So I think that's probably the way it's going to go. 
at the end of the day, I think I'm in the same same boat. I think it is Jerry Judy is going to be the guy. Uh, we, we've seen traditionally in Sean Payton's offense that there seems to be one receiver that's really featured uh, above the rest. We saw that with Michael Thomas for most of his career, Marquise Colston. And then when they didn't have any receiver to feature, they featured Jimmy Graham at tight end. So they they tend to feature one guy a lot in the the passing game and and Sean and we'll see if that was more was that more Drew Brees or was that more Sean Payton we'll we'll kind of find out which one of those um I'm not as out on Cortland Sutton as you guys are uh in fact at the beginning of the season he was actually the main target at the beginning of the year and then he got banged up had some injuries so while I still think Jerry Judy is the best receiver the main guy I'm not as far out I think he does present some value at the end. Like I was getting him in 13th round, 14th round of startups. So he's really inexpensive for what I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean make it. I didn't mean to make it sound like I'm completely out on the guy. I, there was a time when I thought Cortland Sutton was going to be the guy in that offense. Um, the, sure. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be. And I thought that, I thought he had like, you know, low yeah. on wide receiver one per, like type of potential. I don't see that anymore. He is you know, low end wide receiver two type of potential and high end wide receiver three in my eyes. That's kind of how I see him. Do you want to know, do you want to know Cortland Sutton's career average in points per game? What is it? 8.8. Yeah. There you go. Points per game. It's brutal. It's just brutal, man. It's like, and that's after like, almost what that wide receiver one year uh, in year two they had. Like it was just dominant. We were preaching like, I'm with Matt. Yeah. I always take a big step. Uh, is, that, is that in PPR? Yeah. Full point. So, yeah. So I believe it's full point. Okay. Um, so for me, again, I think Corden Sun's a nice player. I just think from when it comes to fantasy football relevance, it's not the case. We saw Sean Payton. You you said it before. Like he likes to feature that one wide receiver. And he and he historically likes to feature a good pass catching tight end. And that's where Greg Dulcich comes in for me. So like where Matt, you're kind of like wishy washy in a tight end situation. You guys don't want to go there. Like. If, there, if everybody else feels that way, like I'm buying a dip on Greg Dulcich then because even coming in last year, you know, what he was averaging on a points per game basis was really, really solid as a rookie tight end, which we normally don't see. And we see if you're a really good pass catching tight end. And I think we all agree that we saw that at Greg Dulcich last year, right? Like a real smooth, good route runner, good hands tight end. We see Sean Payne make, make that works. And if you look back over the years of the tight ends that he has made, found successful – you don't just have to look at Jimmy Graham. And we all know Jimmy Graham was a stud. You can look at guys that one year when Ben Watson was there. Ben Watson came out. He was old. And we're like, oh, what's Ben Watson going to do? Oh, 74 catches, 825 yards, six touchdowns. Uh, they brought in, remember that from the Colts? They brought in like the guy, Kobe Fleener. He had 50 catches for over 600 yards. Uh, Jared Cook, he got over uh, 700 yards receiving. So Sean Payton's offense does feature the tight end, and that's historical from his offense. And I don't think he would have taken over this team if he didn't feel like Russell Wilson can run his offense. And I think that's where, like, he's going to try and find that success. So I love the running game. I love Jerry Judy as wide receiver one. But if you're looking for value, and I think the Adam Troutman news is out there, I don't know how much that is known amongst the Dynasty community, but I think it does put a value on Greg Dulcich. And I am buying that tight end. I'm always trying to find value in the tight end position, right? Like somebody can take that next step into another tier. And I think in Sean Payne's offense, I think Greg Dulcich has the possibility to do it. And I'm with Matt. Like, yeah, could he could he totally screw the whole thing up and go Adam Troutman because that's his guy you brought over from New Orleans? For sure. But Payne was already quoted thinking, quoted saying, when it comes to Greg Dulcich, this guy is going to be um, – on his list of uh, people that be involved in a passing game and that he can run really well and he's got really good ball skills. So I'm excited about that. So that's a lot of time on the Broncos. Yeah, uh, one more one more quick thing. Sorry, no, I, I just Cortland Sutton's contract is a contract that they can kind of get out of at the end of this year. So if, if Sutton doesn't work out, Greg Dulcich might be a guy that kind of slides out and kind of and kind of fills that role. We've seen Peyton do that with other guys and kind of move them, switch them between tight end and wide receiver kind of pretty freely Marcus Colston comes to mind um, in that respect so who knows maybe he'll get some some time flexed out wide um, kind of playing that kind of position uh, in in the Broncos offense as well so we'll see 
And I think I think Sun's good as gone, honestly. Uh, the fact that they picked up a fifth-year option on Jerry Judy tells me that they, this is somebody that they're going to be forced to extend him, right? Like he's going to be too good not to extend. And then the fact that they drafted Marvin Mims in the second round to kind of open up the outside out there, I think that kind of put all the right on the wall you need about and, Cortland and Sun. His contract runs through 2025, but they have an out at the end of this year. So, I mean, I think that's probably – that that's nice. a guy that you could maybe potentially see get cut this year. Yeah, have fun in Arizona. Cortland, hope it all works out. <laughs> Who's next, man? The list of teams uh, to talk on about. The list of teams is Kansas City. So I'll run down. This is going to be a pretty quick one here, right? Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, they got Blaine Gabbert as their backup. Hopefully, we never seen him, and uh, none of the other guys matter. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco, uh, Jarek McKinnon, Clyde edwards alaire They have uh, Den- uh, how do you say the guy's name? Denaire Prince. Prince. Thank you. Um, obviously Travis Kelsey is the tight end. They got Noah Gray, Blake Bell, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Marquise Valdez, Scantlin, Kadarius, Tony at wide receiver, Sky Moore, Justin Watson, Rasheed Rice, uh, Richie James, Justin Ross. Uh, I think those are kind of the guys that are notable. All right. Uh, we don't need to talk talk anything about Pat Mahomes. In my opinion, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. So that's my opinion. He's amazing. Yep. He's, and I know that people, and somebody between me like, Oh, do you ever hear of Tom Brady? Yes, dude. I've heard of Tom Brady and yes, he's got the most rings, but like when it comes to watching the quarterback play football, like watching the tape, he's the best quarterback I think I've ever seen. It's hard. To that's, it's, it's fantastic. That's how it's, and before that it was up there. Like I'm talking about like, you know, Peyton Manning, uh, you know, sure. Rogers was great. Uh, but Pat Mahomes is just built different, man. So we he's don't even talk like, about him. Let's no, talk about this quick, running he's game. He's got though. all the technical crap that those guys had, but he has the ad lib stuff that you can't teach. The, it, it's just insane. His arm yeah, angles are untouchable. So, so this running back room is a little interesting here from a redraft standpoint and a dynasty standpoint, right? Like you have the the failed first round pick and Clyde Edwards Alaire, who they're still given like first team carries when they come out in preseason there. Um, they have a, a guy who was essentially a running back one in PPR formats at the back half of the season, Jarek McKinnon, who's back this year. And then the late round draft pick who comes out of nowhere, Isaiah Pacheco, who was a solid running back two last year. You know, what do you look at this from a dynasty point? Because, there's a like, is there value here? There's cells because I have my opinion about all these guys, but I'd love to hear your guys thought on it first. Okay, Isaiah Pacheco is a battering ram and I love the way he runs. I think he's a two to three year window type of guy. Um, you know, Jarek McKinnon is obviously the PPR guy. That's so cheap and he's going to score you points. I mean, he's the, he's the value. He's the best value on this roster. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, I think is a guy that's unfortunately just going to be a back burner type of guy. And, and we, we, all pretty much missed on him, even just having him in the first round, uh, including the team who drafted them in the first. You know what I mean? Like the the, the Kansas City Chiefs themselves. Uh, so that's how I see those guys. Uh, Pacheco is a you know he's going to be a running back too, based off of probably volume and between the tackle stuff and and scoring touchdowns. And Jarek McKinnon has got high end, I think, running back two type of receiving numbers in him. Yeah, I, I'm not far off from you on that. I don't think we have to spend a ton of time on it because ultimately I don't think their long-term running back is no, here. Definitely not. Uh, I think eventually they find somebody, but for right now, they, they're able to make it work. They're able to piece and part it together because Mahomes is so good and Travis Kelsey is so good that they just kind of throw a few other guys in there that can do specific things and they're good. So the frustrating part is I just don't know that they ever prioritize the running back. And, you know, I'm saying this, and then maybe tomorrow they trade for Jonathan Taylor, and then yeah. this is all moot. But, uh, yeah, I think I think you're right. Isaiah Pacheco, he's a good, good, you know, between the tackles guy for a couple of years. McKinnon's going to catch passes, but he's no spring chicken. Not a lot of dynasty impact. To, to your, no, Pacheco's a to, – To his point real quick about them trading for Jonathan Taylor, they, they don't even have a million dollars of cap space right now. So they'd have to do some serious work. Obviously they have Patrick Mahomes contract, which is they can just 
keep cashing basically <laughs> checks out of that thing and, and getting and finding cap space in there. So it's not, it's not something that they can't do, but I think if we see something happen with his contract, similar to what the Browns did today, which was they've extended miles Garrett and moved around a bunch of money. And now they have the most cap space out of anyone in the NFL, which is interesting. Um, Jonathan Taylor and you would, Nick see a move, you would see something like that happen prior to a trade because they, they absolutely cannot get them under the cap right now. So they would have to do something. Yeah. For me, Isaiah Pacheco is a hard sell in dynasty fans football. A lot of people are looking at him as running back one. I think he's a, Matt said, you, you said two to three year window. I don't really see him that way. Good speed, good size. I saw a real interesting stat from uh John Paulson from four for four. He put out um, in one of his uh, articles was, Cause I, I thought I, I'm with you, Matt, like he's a big, strong running back. And I thought like, you know, when you think of Pacheco, like how hard he runs and, and Paulson wrote that he was 39th out of 40 eligible running backs in broken tackles per carry uh, last year. So like that, that was kind of so much surprising for like how big and how strong he does run. You know, like I thought he would uh, break a little bit more tackles out there, but you're right. It's such like a, it's, I'm with Garrett. We're like, there's no long-term answer here. And that's, and that you can say that a lot about running back rooms, but there is such so mystery here. Like, what do they do with Clyde Edwards Alaire, right? Like, how much more involved is Jarek McKinnon here? Where in all, if he takes all the passing game away from Isaiah Pacheco? And we saw Pacheco come out last year, and he was averaging about two catches per game uh last year. Not a lot of yards, but still the two catches per game, almost 20 yards, so an extra four points. Like, if that disappears, where does he go? To me, you know, they, could they go out there and get a guy like um Jonathan Taylor, I mean, potentially. I, I, I'm i with Matt. I kind of doubt it. But, like, I do think next year in the draft class, this is a position they could go ahead and tackle, which – and then literally because of Isaiah Pacheco's salary and his draft status, like, he's just going to be on the roster and almost lose all his value here. So, for me, I'm just getting out on Pacheco why they're still running back one, like, view like eyes on there and i like a running back one he's an official running back one but he's a chief's number one running back and i think that can get you to on a running back team that's a contender either an upside player or a pick like i think he's a perfect example like hey man like you're a tender i'll give you my second and pacheco and you give me your first like he he's the perfect candidate to like kind of move up in draft class because his value is so um out there and then the vacuum it's gonna be completely different but like you're, it's, you're not going to get a first round pick for Pacheco, right? And you're not going to take a second. So for me, if you can't get an upside player that you like, like a, maybe like an Elijah Moore uh, is a good example of a player that you got there, a Sky Moore for the same team here for the Chiefs for an Isaiah Pacheco, then I'm using him in a dynasty league just to kind of move up in drafts. Like, who can I offer him to? Him? How can I get a dynasty GM and use that league analyzer and see who needs a running back, but also like start from the bottom up? Like, okay, who's who needs a running back that I think they might be able to contend and go from there and try and get first? And I have no problem saying, hey, here's Pacheco to a team that's a little bit older. Here's Pacheco in my second next year and just give me your 25 first. You know what I mean? Like, if I can find an avenue there to move him, that's how I view him as a very fluid piece on my roster that I'm desperately trying to get off before he gets hurt um, or before there's a little bit more clarification in this running room. Because that's all it takes is one exclamation point for them to make, and whether that be via trade or that Clyde edwards Lair is all of a sudden just matching the starter or Jerry McKinnon's getting a lot of run, and that value just drops pretty significantly. And when you miss those windows on these kind of running backs that we see, Matt, year in, year out, coming to the NFL in, in Dynasty Fans Football, their value plummets so quickly, it's about seizing that right window of opportunity to sell. And I think right now, outside the back end of last year, where that window's closing and you need to get your fingers out before they get smashed. So that's that's how I kind of view Isaiah Pacheco is a hard, hard sell in my dynasty leagues. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. Uh let, let's I don't think we need to touch on like Travis Kelsey much. No, Travis not at all. Pat Mahomes, he's like, he's really good. He's older, but he's still really good. Um, but the wide receiver position, this has been hotly debated and contested all offseason, and it's offered a little bit of clarity now that there was the injury to Kadarius Tony. I think people moved off him a little bit. Uh, but where are you guys at on Sky Moore? Because I'm I'm pretty all in for a guy that didn't show us a lot as a rookie. We saw him get utilized in the playoffs. He had the touchdown in the Super Bowl, and everything that I'm seeing it kind of points to if there's going to be somebody that fills in for 
at least all the targets that Juju got last year, it seems like Sky Moore is the leading candidate to be the top receiver. Now, we know Kelsey's always going to be the top pass catcher, but I think we could see a little bit of a mini breakout this year for Sky Moore. Yeah, I 100% agree. I, I love Sky Moore. You're talking about a player who just played 29% of the offensive snaps last year, wasn't really involved on a Super Bowl caliber team, was a rookie, didn't see what we wanted to, but – when you, when you take rookies like that, definitely that aren't first-round picks, and you put them on those kind of teams, definitely playoff teams, this is what you normally see, right? Like, they take a back seat, they lower the offense, and they may only play 30% of the snaps. And you mentioned, Garrett, like, where does this come from? Because it ain't coming from Marquez Valdez-Scantlin, because we know what he is in this offense. You're talking about a guy who just, did, you know, this was a guy who didn't get over 50 yards in more than half the games last year. This this is a guy who only caught more than four passes in two games last year. So where's it coming from? Rich, I, I tried to the, trade Marquez Valdez Scantlin all last year. All last year for anything. I ended up just dropping him this offseason. You picked him up. I couldn't get anything for him. I couldn't get a fifth round draft pick from yeah. Marquez Valdez Scantlin. Nothing. I could not get anything. I picked for him. I picked him up because I had four wide receivers on my team no, and that's I, it. That's why I picked him up. I, mean, I was like, oh I get somebody. It, but I mean you can't even trade you, you, he is completely yeah he's he's I, he's, he's 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 useless he's useless he's irrelevant for he's a, he's a bad person having a roster thing you get in your lineup so like what what happens with sky Moore? like garrett said like what did the team lose the team lost mccall hardman and juju smith schuster you're like oh mccall hardman nothing okay well in the receiving room he had the most touchdowns with six what do you lose with juju Juju led the team last year in targets with 113. He led the team in receptions, 88. He led the team in yards, 1,022. If we can get that, the go to Sky Moore, and I know we're seeing you know names like Justin Ross, Richie James, and the, and the rookie Rasheed Rice. Like, okay, well let's treat Rice like kind of like Sky Moore last year, right? Like a, 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 a second round draft pick probably won't see a ton of snaps out there. You know, they'll still probably put Marquez Vanessa Scantlin out there as a third option, potentially. But could it be Justin Ross? Potentially, yeah. Could it be Richie James? Sure. But Sky Moore is the best option you can kind of lean to take that juju share. And if I can get that, that's wide receiver two production out there. And if you if you could throw McCall Hardman's touchdowns out, touchdowns out there, and when it comes to touchdowns in a Pat Mahomes offense, that number could vary pretty heavily. If we can get that six touchdowns, 88 yards and 1,022 uh, yards for Sky Moore. We're going to see a massive ADP jump when it comes to dynasty value overall, and we're going to see a massive jump just jump just in his overall production for wide receiver two uh, in in fantasy football. So I love Sky Moore this year. I think he's the best option out there. We're already seeing really good reports out of camp and him in preseason as Pat Mahomes are really uh, kind of growing this rapport. And you got to agree, right? You got to think about it. Like, yeah. He needs to find somebody because, like Matt said, Marquez Valdez, Scantlin is in that. And it could be Rasheed Rice. It could be Justin Ross. But those are big could-bes. Odds are, and what it looks like so far, it's going to be Sky Moore. And that's what I want. I want the number one receiving option that's not Travis Kelsey in this offense. I mean, I, I'm all for everything you're saying. I The only thing that's kind of in the back of my mind right now is this past week, this past weekend's you know uh, preseason performance where – the offense looked fantastic and, you know, Patrick Mahomes did his thing, but he, he came in and passed in nine different guys in like his first nine passes. And he just completely sure. spread the ball around and you know, who's going to get the most work and it's going to be like the most consistent stuff is going to be a guy like Jarek McKinnon and obviously Travis Kelsey. And I'm not sure that they care if anyone else gets a consistent load or not. It, if Sky Moore emerges, then yes, he will he will be that guy that kind of emerges as the wide receiver that gets it. But I think they're just fine. You mentioned it earlier. Patrick Mahomes is just so good that they don't care. They're like, yeah, we'll pass it around. It's similar to the running backs. We don't care who really gets it. We're just going to move the ball all around, and Patrick Mahomes is going to do his thing. He's going to find the right guy for this play, and he's going to hit him. You know what I mean? We're not even going to design plays to go to certain guys. Yeah. Pat, see what you see out there. Hit the guy that's open. I mean, that could be that simple. I, I – I think you're absolutely right, Matt. I, I do think that they're going to move the ball around. I think it's the it's really going to be on Sky Moore yeah. to earn mm -hmm. targets, you know, because they did it with Tyreek and, and Travis Kelsey before where those two were the main focus and then there was everything else. So we know that it's possible. It's not just the only one guy gets focused on and, you know, everybody else is just, we'll see what happens. So we've seen it. It's really got to be on Sky Moore to make enough plays, get open enough, 
to start earning those targets, to earn the looks more, to earn more of the design plays to go to him. And so it's it's going to be on him. So I think he I. has enough talent to do it. Yep, absolutely. But he's got to execute. And Kadarius and Tony, are we just are we just out on Kadarius Tony? Trust him. I just can't. I, I yeah. It's just yeah, the I injury wanted, history. I mean, we even I saw the, see a healthy seventeen games out of Kadarius Tony in this offense because I think that would be the most exciting thing in the NFL. Do you know what I mean? Like that could. We'll sort of for like that, a no, that could you imagine a full 17 game slate of Kadarius Tony? How how much production I think he could get in this kind of offense? He could be a 13, 1400 yard guy, like he and just peppered with targets all day long. The guy separates like crazy, he just cannot stay healthy. So, exactly what you said, I just can't trust him. I don't know the Chiefs can use to trust him either. I mean, you gotta remember, you look back to the AFC game, the Super Bowl, and I know we had that you know the catch there too, but I mean, he didn't play a lot of snaps. In either of those games, like he wasn't on the radar. I mean, we saw his social media, like he doesn't know how to like get out of his own way. It seems at times as well. Um, the things that he's willing to put out on social media, which is that's cool. If you do a podcast, I don't know if it's really cool. If you're trying to be the number one receiver in the NFL, like I could say all kinds of stupid things because I just, I host a podcast. You know what I mean? Like you're the number one trying to be number one receiver for the chiefs. And it sucks. He, he falls that category, man. When those, like you said, he's an electric player. Like he, He's hard to cover. You can get open. It's just, is it one of those situations where we see talent just go to waste because the player himself can't get out of his own way or his body itself can't stop hurting itself? And the, and why does he keep getting hurt? Like, is is he not doing what he's supposed to do? I don't know. That's, that's a, I have no idea. I, I would just be speculating. So I'm not saying anything like that. But, like, when we see this happen year in, year out, and for a team to give up on a first-round receiver, like, so quickly, like, that usually doesn't end well, right? Like it's, there's reasons for that. And so far he's done nothing to dispel any of those reasons. Yep. All right. Well, before we go to the next teams, let me remind you guys about FFPC. Now things are moving quickly. As Rich talked about, we're, we're itching and inching towards the regular season. And because of that, all of their redraft leagues, which are amazing, by the way, some of them have $6 million, Others, 5.9, which is basically $6 million, uh, and $1 million grand prizes. But they're moving those to a shorter clock. So if you want to get in, get some action, your time is winding down. No more eight-hour clocks anymore because they can't guarantee that'll get done. You're down to like four and two. Like you got got to get in, get it done quickly. But head over to myffpc.com, an amazing place to play, up to a $5,000 entry so you can do – really huge awesome leagues you're like you know i want to play a little more casual let's do a hundred dollars but even if you do that a hundred dollars you can get 25 dollars off if you use promo code nerds at myffpc.com. that's promo code nerds to get 25 dollars off any entry for new members at myffpc.com. all right let's jump on down to the next team now the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders. All right. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is their quarterback. Brian Hoyer is the backup. And the promising Aiden O'Connell as the number three, right? Not fourth round draft pick. At running back, they got. <laughs> Cut him by mistake. If, in what league? In a super flex league I am. I went to go cut Mitch Trubisky and I accidentally clicked Aiden McConnell. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and like literally 30 seconds later, somebody swooped him I up. Bet. And I was like, my. My bad, guys. I didn't mean to cut them. And they're like, well, what do you want to do? I was like, nothing, dude. It's my bad. Um, all right. At running back, Josh Jacobs, Zamir White, Amir Abdullah, and I think Damian Williams is there also. Uh, Brandon Bolden. Brandon Bolden. I forgot about him. Brandon Bolden, who's basically a special team guy and kind of comes in here and there. Um, Austin Hooper at tight end. Michael Mayer. Uh, no one else in note there. And at wide receiver, Devontae Adams. Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro are the top three. Then they got Trey Tucker as the rookie. And anyone else, you guys, Philip Dorsett, who I didn't even know was still in the NFL, is also there. Keelan Cole, I mean, I know he's older now, but Keelan Cole's, I mean, Unfortunately, Keelan Cole doesn't really fit Jimmy Garoppolo's skill set because he's like a take the top off kind of receiver there, with the speed, and that's the, literally the opposite of Jimmy Garoppolo's game. Sure. Like if you're if you're past twenty yards where Jimmy Garoppolo is standing, you're not getting the football. That's true. I mean, he is a low A dot type of guy. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I I, I would guess that they're they're down there pretty low. 
I'm going to find him. Oh, it's pretty low. He's like, what? No, I'm going to find him right he's now. He's one of the, yeah, you, you look it up. He's one of the worst in the leagues when it comes, but like, but that's fine because he, he thrives in the intermediate area, right? That's like where Kyle Shanahan even used him. Like he thrives there. So like, this is great news for like, uh, Hunter Renfro. I mean, obviously Adam, Devontae Adams, he wins everywhere. You know what I mean? And he benefited from last year from Darren Waller being hurt and all like Hunter Renfro being banged up. Like he just led the league in yards, targets, catches, all that. Like Devonte Adams just ate it up because he's that good. He's always going to win. It doesn't matter where his quarterback is, but Jimmy's grapplers like game is really defined in that intermediate area. So like, I think we could, could possibly see uh, a, a slight resurgence made from Hunter Renfro. I know Jacoby Myers got paid there uh, as well, and he's come off a career year where he's averaging 4.8 receptions and 57.4 yards per game, which isn't great fantasy numbers, but, like, I mean, he's a third flex. <laughs> yeah, well, and he fits He fits what they're wanting to do. Yeah. He's a former New England guy, so he knows the system. It's a, it's a comfortability thing. And that's the thing. They, they know exactly what they're going to get out of him, and he kind of knows the system well enough. Uh, from his time there in New England that he's going to be able to operate it. It's going to work fine. I think Aiden O'Connell is the guy that is kind of exciting for the future. We we touched on him briefly there when Rich talked about dropping him, but he's looked really good in the preseason games and, and just kind of operated the offense very smoothly. Um, kid coming out of Purdue. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, last... We talked to him a little bit on the Ricky Breakdowns a little bit. We, we did. You called him Aiden O'Connell. Mm-hmm. I'm, so, I'm so detailed. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> you're anal retentive. Is that what you're saying? It's yeah, that's a, you know what I'm trying to say. Come on, dude. I got an IQ of 105. I think he was a guy, he was a guy that went in the fourth round that maybe surprised some people. And, and as soon as he did, he kind of it kind of perked my uh, or piqued my interest rather. Um, and and he show me your nipples. <laughs> that would be perking my interest, Rich. Not piquing my interest. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh... Um. But he's he's come out and looked really good in these first couple of preseason games. We'll see if it you know continues and maybe he can win that number two job. Um, you know, I think Hoyer's there for this year. I mean, I think he's the long term number two at 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 the least there. But he could he could be a guy that takes over for Jimmy G. I think they have a potential out in twenty twenty four. Both his twenty 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 three and twenty twenty four salaries were um, guaranteed at signing uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, so he'll be there for the next couple of seasons anyway. But Aiden O'Connell's a nice little hold. In, in a lot of different formats. I mean, I even swooped him up in a one QB league um, where I didn't have a ton of depth just to kind of hold on to him and see what happens. Because Jimmy G, if if we've seen Jimmy G out there, we've seen Jimmy G get injured. Um, it's kind of a seasonal thing for him. So I think there there might be a point in time this season even that we see Aiden O'Connell kind of get out there on the field at some point. Well, and even though his contract's guaranteed, it's not a huge deal like we've seen with a lot of these other quarterbacks that, you know, teams these days can eat, you know, 20 some million and it's not, it's not the end of the world. So if they decide that he's just better then they'll just let Jimmy G sit the bench and, you know, they'll pay him and, and whatever, but uh, he's, he is, he's a guy I'm, I'm excited about. I'm interested in uh, Jared actually offered me a trade to try to get him off my team. And he offered me a third and then like a nice little player on top of it. And I was like, nah, at this point, like, you got to overpay yeah. uh, cuz he's shown enough and in a super flex league I would rather just wait and see what happens as opposed to taking a random third and like a you know a little piece like if, if he ends up being nothing oh well but at that point like I'm not selling cheap because th- those guys are lottery tickets you know we we saw that with Jalen Hurts a couple years ago lottery ticket you know we we see this with Desmond Ritter and different guys like that they're, they're lottery tickets do they pan out often they don't but sometimes they do, and they turn into Jalen and Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins. Brock, and they turn into Purdy big pieces. last year. I mean, was Brock a guy Purdy. that came out of nowhere yeah. and, and absolutely, uh, you know, has established himself within one year, uh, you know, of being a starter on a really, really good offense. So, I mean, it's not it's not out of the realm of possibility. Aiden O'Connell has looked competent and more than competent um, in, in these first couple of, of, of weeks of the preseason. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. If he's out there on your waiver wire, maybe – you know, maybe your league doesn't value quarterbacks and you just need some depth, even in a one QB league, you might be a guy to just pick up. And if you have a, if you have a roster spot open, he, he's probably worth a stash. In a super flex league, would you ride, uh, would you get hop on that name train today and take a second round pick for Ian O'Connell? Second would be tempting. A second would be tempting because like, 
like you said, more often than not, it doesn't work, but it would yeah. have to depend on the team. You know, if it's, if it's a true contender and I'm getting like two eleven, two twelve, then I'm, then I'm probably just going to sit pat. But if I'm getting anything where they're mid to early, then yeah, I'll, I'll give Aiden O'Connell up and, and take the pick. I'd probably take a sit late second. I mean, he's not very mobile um, there. I feel like, you know, with this team in the age, like I feel like if the wheels fall off of this, it doesn't matter how good it kind of looks in the preseason, how solid a backup he is. Um, I think, you know, the wheels fall off. They're going to be positioned to get a, a better quarterback in the NFL draft and that they'd get a first round pedigree uh, quarterback. So again, could anything happen? But like, we're always chasing like all those names that you mentioned, like that's always, that's, that's the rub, right? Like that's what you're always kind of trying to fall in that category. Sure. And for me, like, I would just rather have a second. Um, I don't really view Aiden O'Connell even as, like, a if he was a starter. Like, I don't I don't see him as, like, a great fantasy football option. You know, like, again, he offers almost nothing in the Mogao, the running game sure, there, sure. which is much needed. And if they if, if they end up going that route, they're going to blow. The, like, all the receivers on his team, like, that outside of Jacoby Myers, are like, they're old, right? Like, they're just going to blow this thing to, the shreds. And the offense around him would be terrible, which gives him no opportunity to succeed which puts them at the bottom of the league and puts them at the top of the draft again, kind of like that Gardner Minshew kind of thing, right? Like that Gardner, you know, like they kind of look. I mean, hell, even here in the Browns, like Dorian Thompson Robinson's looked like the best quarterback of all the rookies right now. But there's no, like no, there's no clear future for him whatsoever with Deshaun Watson there. So for me, I think for Aiden O'Connell, even to get a chance means things have gone bad, which means things are going to be real bad around him, which means the Raiders are going to be in a position to draft a quarterback pretty high. Um, and if things go good, it, it, it still it doesn't lean path for him. Like, you need a super outlier to get there. So I'd kind of, like, use this preseason hype if I could try and get a second. Like, definitely to the Jimmy Garoppolo owner uh, who has him on his roster. I'd feel really good about that. You're right, Garrett. A third doesn't move the needle at all. But, like, give me a second and 24 to go with my second I already have. That gives me more ammo to potentially move up in what we hope is going to be a deep class. Um, yeah. Or just stand pat and get some really good upside players like we saw this year with the second round just literally full of them. Um, and surprises in there that we even anticipate, like the Jaden Reeds and Rasheed Rices that we're talking about. So that's how I feel about that. And then at the tight end position, Austin Hooper's there. Uh, he's a stick in the mud. Michael Mayer's there. We'll see if he could kind of overtake him. But either way, neither neither of these are great options. It's going to be the three wide receiver sets. That's how Josh McDaniels runs his offense. He literally runs the lowest 12 personnel in the entire NFL when it comes from a head coach. Co- coach standpoint i don't think michael mayer is uh gonna come out and make a point as a rookie and i don't think i think the days of austin hoover being relevant are long were gone the day he left atlanta falcons so uh for me the tight end position long term michael mayer could be a solid like tight end eight to 12 but that doesn't move my needle either um so the only thing i'm re- really excited about here overall is the end of Devonte Adams, and then will Josh Jacobs show up and be a stud like he is every single year? That's absolutely. And if he doesn't, can I see Zamir White? Mean, that's, that's absolutely yeah. Hey. Right that's that's the that's the rub there. That's the that's the hot bud hot button issue is will Josh Jacobs show up? I mean, and there's a bunch of scuttle, but that he's going to show up week one, and then he came out on social and said, "I don't remember saying that," and then deleted it. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. Well, I mean, we'll, we're going to see exactly what happens. Obviously, Zamir White, they're they're talking up as much as they can, you know, saying he's doing a good job in pass pro. He knows all of his assignments. He's a tough runner in between the tackles. Blah 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 blah. If Josh Jacobs is there, he goes right to the back burner, and, and Josh Jacobs comes right back into his role. Um, if he's not there, Zamir White's a guy that you can fire up and expect probably running back two numbers at, at the very least uh, in this offense. Yep. Yep. I agree. I don't think we can move on to the Chargers. I think Josh Jacobs is my number one own running back in fans football. So you're sweating it out right now, huh? Dynasty. So your fingers are crossed. No, because I got a lot of Zamir White yeah. shares as well. So there you go. <laughs> drive up All his right. value. <laughs> All right, moving on to the Los Angeles <gasps> Chargers. Um, uh, Justin Herbert's the QB1. Easton Stick is the number two. They did draft Max Duggan or Dugan or however the hell you say that guy's name. Dugan. Dugan. Dug. Great restaurant, Max Dugan's, by the way. And you could, Rich. Did you ever go there growing up? All right. I did. Yeah. It was good. I enjoyed every uh, meal I had place. there. Um, Austin, Austin Eckler as the running back. <laughs> 
<laughs> Josh Kelly, Isaiah Spiller, um, Elijah Dotson. He showed out pretty well in uh, the week one uh, preseason game. At tight end, they have Gerald Everett, Donald Parham, Trey McKitty, kitty, kitty, and <laughs> Mike, at wide receiver, Mike Williams, my boy, Quentin Johnston, Keelan Allen, uh, Jalen Guyton, Josh Palmer, Darius Davis. That's that's about it on that one. I'm not going to go any further. Yep, that's fair. Justin Herbert, not a lot to talk about there. Um is there any dip in his value because of the numbers put up last year, which he was quarterback 11, literally being a quarterback one his entire career to sign a massive extension. You're talking about uh, somebody who's vested there, but if there's any dip because of like Jalen hurts, um, Joe Burrow. Like I still personally have Justin Herbert as my quarterback three overall and easy Super for Flex. you to say. No, I'm yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a hundred percent with you. Think about Froggy what happened fresh. last year. Dude, dude had like, a a really bad like rib injury that he kept like dealing with and then Keenan Allen got hurt and then Mike Williams got hurt and like everything that could have gone wrong in the passing game went wrong and he was still a quarterback one so it's it's wheels up for for Justin Herbert I'm a hundred percent with you any sort of dip I'm buying yeah and they bring in uh they change offensive coordinator they go with Kellen Moore which is fantastic I mean Kellen Moore's offense is historically finished in a top third when it comes to scoring uh in the nfl so this is great news for justin herbert there as well and you mentioned garrett him getting his receivers back i mean we're not just talking about getting um regular receivers back we're talking about two wide receiver ones two wide receiver ones in keen allen and mike williams who are on the wrong side of 28 i know keelan allen's gonna be 31 and uh uh mike williams is gonna be 29 yep. i believe this year but they're still they're still for this year still qualified to put up wide receiver one numbers. And that's what they do when they're on the field and perform. We just got to see them on the field Absolutely, and perform. Man. And, you know, you look at both those guys' contracts, they both have outs after this year. So this this might be one of those things where Quentin Johnston is learning for one year and then they make a decision on one of these guys. Right now, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are right around $13 million against the cap. So they're they're up there as far as – chewing up the cap space obviously you get a couple more years out of out of mike williams and um i could definitely see a scenario where one of those guys is not on this team though next year and and for me i mean who do, who do you really move well I, I guess we'll see how this year goes i mean if if mike williams still can't stay healthy again this year it might be him off the team uh we'll see I, as much as that that pains me to say i mean it's hard to bring a 32 year wide receiver back yeah, I was gonna say it's probably Keenan Allen with his age. Yeah. That's 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 a tough spot. I mean, I think they did him a favor by guaranteeing his contract this year um, to kind of make it a little bit easier going to the next okay. year. Um, I mean, we'll see though, right? You know, I mean, that's one of those things where if Mike Williams doesn't stay healthy and Keenan balls out, it, it could go the other way. That's all I'm saying. I think they're great buys for oh, both exactly. championships. Obviously, Mike Williams would be the cheaper version, but if you're a dynasty contender, these are both fantastic buys. I mean, I just I did I did a flip uh, earlier this week. I did a trade where I traded uh, I traded Devonte Adams in my high stakes league, and I got back Keen Allen. Oh man, I can't remember now. All of a sudden, it was Keen I Allen. I was there with running you. Running back. Can't remember either when you were when you were. Yeah, I can't remember. Um. But I was, I was trying to, you know, I think, you know, because he was hurt last year, you forget how much value Keen Allen brings to the head table with a savvy route run and how much Justin Herbert likes to go to him as well when he's healthy. I mean, he was a low end wide receiver one last year before he did get hurt. And he comes in there week in and week out. And he, he, he produces. Uh, oh, I got Ke I got Alvin Kamara, Josh Palmer and Keen Allen for Devontae Adams. So I, like I felt pretty good about that. And uh, oh, I'll end the show with a crazy trade I just made, too. I'll see if you guys like this one as well. I, I thought I, w I put it on Twitter, but I don't know if you guys saw it. I, I felt like I won it pretty yeah. significantly. But um, I think they're both ad great ads for this year. I think Quentin Johnson, kind of how he talked about the Chiefs receivers, like it was great that the Chargers were pumping him up in the beginning of this preseason with these one-handed catches. Like, oh, can't catch, can't catch. Well, there's a lot of reports coming camp now that he's having some drop issues, which is somewhat of a concern. And, you know, my my concerns wasn't his overall hands. My concern with Quinn Johnson was 
when a defensive back is on him. Like he didn't win with his size that you anticipated he would be. And that's where the drops even come more into effect. He's not, he's catching with his body a little bit more. So, you know, can Quinn Johnson uh, pull a DK Metcalf and do better? Like, of course he can. But for this year, a team that's trying to compete and get to the Super Bowl with this roster that they have, knowing this is probably the last time they're going to have this core together, then I, it's going to be Keen Allen and Mike Williams if those guys are healthy. And then Gerald Everett at tight end. And don't forget, Austin Eckler is more of a pass catcher than he is a ru- rusher. So for me, I think all those guys can live in this offense and win definitely under Kellen, Kellen Mond. I think they're all buys. Obviously, Austin Eckler, everybody wants him, but he, he's an expensive running back out there. But Keen Allen, like Williams, can both be had out there for the right kind of deals. I understand you not want to give a first-round pick for either of those guys if you're a contender, and that makes total sense. But I think there is a workaround, and I think that workaround is youth for both of those players. If you can come at that one of those teams that's somewhat out of it and you can offer some kind of youth to go with a second-round pick, they can be had. And they're both the kind of talented players that could be wide receiver ones in the same offense and carry you to a championship. I love them in 2023. One one last thing I'll I'll touch on is you mentioned it real briefly, Matt. Uh, but Elijah Dotson is somebody that we didn't get to really talk about because we had never heard of him. Nobody had really heard of him. Get out of Northern Colorado uh, that came out, but he's performed really well. A lot of the things I'm reading is he's outperforming a lot of the other backups uh, on this team. Now he's not huge. He's like 205 pounds, so he's not like a a super big physical back, but. We keep waiting for there to be somebody with Austin Eckler. Is it going to be him? Chances are no. He's an undrafted guy, but worthwhile end of the bench stash just in case he ends up being that guy. Or they, you know, things go poorly and they trade Austin Eckler midseason. Like just, just a name to keep in mind to just stash. At Listen, the end anytime of bench, that yeah. there's a running back that has an issue, you want to start looking at the backups, right? See who's on the roster that can fill a void if there is a if there is a move made. Elijah Dotson, I believe, was a wide receiver convert, which he was, he converted in my eyes. Ding. I mean, this is a guy that can come in, do the pass catching work that if if Austin Eckler, for whatever reason, finds his way off this team, I would see Isaiah Spiller doing most of the dirty work between the tackles. But they're going to they're going to still want it, that element in the offense and a, and a converted wide receiver. And Elijah Dotson is a guy that makes some sense, at least in my brain, as a guy that could fill that void. Yep. So I went out and I did I did pick him up on, on a team where I had a spot. And just in case, we'll see what happens. That's exactly how I got Austin Eckler originally. You know what I mean? Austin Eckler came out of nowhere. I was going to say he was an undrafted free agent, exactly. too. Same type of thing. All right, right, that's it. You want to hear my trade, then we can go? (laughs) Yes. That's why you always throw these trades out there, because you never know what's going to stick. And somebody was like, threw a couple offers back that I declined, and I kind of threw one out there that I didn't think wasn't going to accept it. It did. Uh, I received, this is Superflex tight end premium. I received Joe Burrow and David Montgomery. I, I gave up Kenny Pickett. George Pickens and a 24 first. Oh yeah. Yeah. Great. I mean, you, I mean, unless the only way that's not a smash is if you thought your pick was going to be a top three pick, it was, it was their own pick. Um, I gave back. Oh, okay. And I honestly think it, it could be somewhere. It could be somewhere, probably anywhere from one, three to one, nine. I don't know. It depends how yeah. uh, it pans out, but I couldn't miss that opportunity to no, uh, pick up Joe Burrow. And I swear I gave up, one more piece on top of that. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Sorry. I also gave up uh, a 25. No, that's it. Oh, Ka- sorry. Kyle Trask. That's what else I gave up. Eh. So, but I got Joe Burrow. Never, Kenny Pickett, like George it. Pickens. I was just trying to capitalize on that combo of Kenny Pickett and George Pickett's upside for a guy who I think is going to be a top six fantasy quarterback for the you, foreseeable you future. That. I mean, Joe Burrow, yep. getting Joe Burrow is uh, worth all that other stuff probably alone. You know what I mean? So you got some stuff on top. You're all good. Follow me on Twitter at Dynasty Rich for more of my sweet, rich trades. I'm at Dynasty Matt. <laughs> you won't see any of my sweet trades, though. <laughs> <laughs> you won't see anything from Matt except for like a random like and retweet. While retweet. Matt yeah. was really great on the show this week. <laughs> retweet. Retweet. <laughs>
Uh, All right, we'll be back uh, next week. Hopefully from Wright Patterson Air Force Base, you'll hear us. Uh, follow our socials as well, so we can be posting a whole bunch on our social and at, at Dynasty Nerds as well um, for being at Wright Patterson Air Force Base this Thursday. Hopefully, we get a show to you out by Tuesday at the latest. Um, and then uh, we'll be back next Adios. week.